journey was very different. I am fourth generation in my family business that started in India in 1905. And 10 years into my career, I decided I no longer wanted to be part of my family business. And I left India, I left my family, and I moved to the UAE um, with a dream and lots of aspirations. And I started my own company here in the UAE, um, you know, and today, four years later, life is not the same that it was four years ago. So my journey in leadership was literally self-inflicted. I did not want to report to my parents. I was a rebel and I took a huge risk as a Muslim, as an unmarried girl, as an Indian. I left home and I came to, into uncharted territory, quite literally speaking. So um, the, the world was my oyster. My parents were very supportive, although not very, um, they, were, they were nervous as, as most parents would be. And here I am today, I have a, a team of 10 people um, and you know we've opened up offices in Dubai, in Fujairah. We had one in Abu Dhabi pre-COVID, during COVID that um, we have temporarily shut down. But we also have offices in Oman. Inshallah, we're looking at expanding in the GCC. Hopefully, Bahrain, Kuwait. So you know the opportunities have suddenly, out of nowhere, started coming through, and that has been exceptionally exciting. And you can only do that when you're a leader of your own choices. So for me, leadership and the journey has really been making those difficult choices that were never really an option in a family-run business. When someone asks you the shape of your journey, it's such an emotional question for me um, because the shape has been full circle, but in the opposite direction. So, you know, I started in a very, in a very stable environment working in India, where we have 250 people reporting to the management, uh, nine offices, and we're a 115-year-old company growing. And I walked away from that. So instead of sort of being a linear progression, starting small and then working your way up top, I started up top and crashed all the way down to like nothing. So when I came to the UAE, we didn't even have a trade license in place. We didn't even have a place to work. I was working from home. And slowly but surely, um, with the support of the maritime industry and incredible people that I have met along the way in this journey, uh, we started bit by bit, one employee, second employee, third employee, and then one branch, second branch, third branch, and we're only four years old. So with a team today of about 15 people, including engineers, coordinators, we also have staff and back office coordination from India. So we really are a global company. We're a very small company, but we're definitely a global company. So when I say the shape was literally full circle, but role reversal, I started from a management position and went into a completely, um, you know, went to ground zero. And once again, through hard work, dedication, dreams, aspirations, and the support of my colleagues have once again risen back to, management, to a managerial position. So it's been a very emotional but very exhilarating journey. How does one define a challenge? Everything was challenging and everything was rewarding. Um, I think the biggest challenge, if you really ask me, was being optimistic. Every day when you wake up and the future looks so unsure, so unfamiliar, nobody knows who you are. You have to establish your own credibility. Uh, even getting a credit line from the banks has been, you know, I mean, to support your, to biz your business was challenging. But the most important thing and the thing that I learned very early on as in a startup position was, uh, and all supposed to be the biggest challenge, was earning a customer's trust. I found that um, I made lots of excuses. I said, oh, I'm young, I'm a woman, nobody wants to give me a chance, an opportunity. All that was just excuses. And the biggest challenge of all was basically having to work to, for credibility rather than just being given credibility on, um, on a plateau. And coming from a family business with a very well-respected, very well-recognized family name in India, Suddenly, I was a nobody in the UAE, and that was very challenging for me because it was literally a, a fall from, from grace, if you will. 
and uh, accepting that I have to start from ground zero and work my way up was hugely challenging for me. And when I said huge, and I, when I also when I said rewarding, it was hugely rewarding because the maritime industry in the UAE literally accepted me with open arms. They never questioned my, my dignity, they never questioned my intelligence, they never questioned my technical knowledge. They listened and they let me speak and they gave me opportunities to prove myself. So that's so, I was lucky and fortunate enough to convert that challenge into an opportunity that was eventually rewarding because I'm standing here before you today um, after creating a small success story with four branches and uh, a, an incredible team that I work with, both at, uh, with my colleagues as well as my customers. For women who, who want to join the marine segment, the biggest blessing is that there are just so few of us. There are very, very few women who are in this industry. And so when you meet other people, other customers, they will remember you. <laughs> and that's half the battle won, right? You might forget who you meet, but when you meet them again at, an, at another occasion, because the industry is very small. So when you start meeting people for the second and third time, they remember women and they remember you. So automatically you get a sort of notch above the other men that have to make multiple good impressions. You just have to make one good impression and you have a, you have a foot in the door. So I would say the maritime industry is a great place for women, very welcoming, very respectful. You just have to take that leap of faith quite literally speaking.